I come back here not to thank you for teaching me how to be a lawyer, but I think I finally figured out, Mr. B, what you were trying to teach us when they talk about trying to learn how to think like a lawyer. You come into law school and all the lawyers here are going to be nodding. They talk about learning how to think like a lawyer. That really didn't mean too much to me, but I think I know what it is now. And to, to tell you what I think it is, I need to backtrack a little bit. Um, the professor that had the most impact on me was B, Wester B. Uh, not only because he, he led us with our moot court competition, but because he had a zest for life and a zest for tort law, which is personal injury law to you non-lawyers. And he was one of our first professors. And you go through, and law school is very different than undergrad. You take these classes, and you come in, and there's a final. And the finals are always really interesting. So this is a typical final question. I, I, I need to tell you this to kind of explain to you what I think it is to think like a lawyer. A typical finals question from Western Beat would be something like, Farmer A felt very lucky. So he went out and bought a lottery ticket. He was so anxious about the lottery drawing that night that he decided to hunt to pass the time. <laughs> he shot a pheasant. It fell on the property of Farmer B. Farmer A and Farmer B had a long-standing feud, and so Farmer B picks up the pheasant and gleefully says, this is mine, and starts dancing a jig. <laughs> farmer A runs across the property line, tackles Farmer B, and breaks Farmer B's leg. Farmer B's wife is eight months pregnant. She's looking out the kitchen window, observes all this, and goes into premature labor and has a very bad result. <laughs> the lottery ticket falls out of Farmer A's pocket, gets into the wind, and ends up on the land of Farmer C. He discovers it the next day and learns that it's a winning lottery ticket. What torts are here? Please discuss. <laughs> The C answer, and I think these professors love giving out C's, the C answer was to say that this was an assault and a battery, which of course it was. Farmer A committed an assault and a battery on Farmer B. The B answer was to discuss all of the other possible torts and civil claims of action, no matter how odd or unlikely they were. The A answer was to give the policy reasons why they should or should not be torts. So we went through this process, and the overwhelming number of kids in the class got C's, and everybody said, why in the world do we have to talk about all this extraneous stuff when obviously this is an assault and a battery? And we were then spent the next three years with similar professors, where we were incentivized not just to look at the obvious, but to look at the things that weren't quite so clear, that were nuanced, that might be possible, probably not, but should at least be discussed. So we went, I did that for three years, and it was fine, and it was fun, and it seemed like a bit of a game. But then it ends up in the real world that in the real world, people that succeed and people that make a difference and people that actually solve problems tend to be the folks that don't just see the assault and battery. They see all of the other possibilities. They don't just look at the obvious. They look at what might be. So for Stacy and I, our best thinking like a lawyer wasn't practicing law. It was when we entered into the elder care business and we asked the simple question, why can't we build assisted living facilities and nursing homes as nice as a Hyatt Hotel? And people said, oh, you can't do that. They gave us the C answer. And we assumed that they were right, but we continued to investigate it and we determined that the C answer was incorrect. And so we headed off in an entirely different direction, I think in part, because we have learned at this institution, at this school, that sometimes you have to go beyond the obvious. It ends up in politics that thinking like a lawyer means that when you walk into a room and two people disagree on 95% of the topics, and you, most folks would say, wow, they just can't get along. Thinking like a lawyer is finding the 5% that they do agree on, blowing that up a little bit, and trying to reach and so we are grateful not for being lawyers, which has been good for us. We are grateful for the thought process that we learned of going beyond the obvious. Now, I have no idea, as I look at these professors, if that's what you had in mind when you told us <laughs> you us to think like lawyers. If not, if it's something much more boring than that, I guess I just have, I have two responses. 
The first is I already have the award and I'm not giving it back. <laughs> the second is that I will cling to my more romantic view that Shakespeare was wrong, the world doesn't need fewer lawyers, that in the area of art and design and engineering, public policy and international relations and certainly politics, we don't need less lawyers, we need more people who think like lawyers.